The Chiropractic Philanthropist, Episode 267. If you want to change, if you want more of something in your life, then you have to do something different. And it seems like it's so simple, but at the same time, I think we forget a lot of these simple principles. Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. Hey, chiropractors. Tired of doing weekend-long health screenings at health fairs? Is spending weeks preparing for talks or workshops getting in the way of quality time with your family and friends? Then why aren't you tapping into social media for new patients? Wouldn't it be great if that service could bring you anywhere from 10 to 45 new patients per month into your practice? Guess what? I have a solution for you. 3S Chiropractic Systems is a company run by chiropractors with years of web and social media marketing experience, and they're offering you a complete, affordable, done-for-you package. They offer a full money-back guarantee for the first month, so there's no risk. Apply at 3schiropracticsystems.com forward slash TCP to make sure you don't miss out. All right, TCP listeners, I got an incredible guest today. I am incredibly excited, and I actually mean it today, because it's Dr. Karen Osborne. Dr. Karen, how are you doing today? Doing awesome. <laughs> there was a bit of a pause there, a bit of a pause, but I do call you Dr. Karen at home. Karen is good. <laughs> okay. So, Karen, you know, um, I know you. I mean, we've been together, oh God, how long have we been Almost together? 25 years. 25 long years that we have been together. It's the best, the best 25 years of your life. <laughs> my life. That. Yes. My yeah. life did not begin until 25 years ago. Exactly. And so I know you like nobody knows you. Right. But I got to tell you, I mean, there's probably people who are listening right now, docs listening that don't know who Karen Osborne is. So if I could say like in a sentence or two, like who is Karen Osborne? In a sentence or two? Sentence or two. Okay. Um, wife, mother, formerly, uh, practicing chiropractor and now on a mission to help people, pardon me, help women discover their power and really own who they are. Beautiful. Awesome. And so, you know, one of the things that we, we love to do too on the philanthropist, you know, chiropractors, social media, we love quotes. We love memes. Like we share this stuff up all, all, the, all day long. So I want you to share an original. Can I ask you for an original? Totally. I was going to ask. <laughs> I was like, I don't want totally egotistical to go. Let me just quote myself. No, I'm going to, I want an original Karen Osborne, women wanting more badass quote. Cool. Okay. So let me, let me think here for a second. Um, one thing I've, I've often said is that if you want, want different, you need to do different. If you want and different. You need to do different. Okay. In other words, uh, you could say it's maybe that spin on the whole definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expect different results. But it's different, though. It's just like, and, I, and, and the word do is in there because to me, it's like if you want something different to show up in your life, if you want to change, if you want more of something in your life, then you have to do something different. And it seems like it's so simple, but at the same time, I think we forget a lot of these simple principles. And if you just kind of marinate on that one for a little bit, if you want different, need to do different, there's, there's, a, there's a big thing within that. So, I, I mean, like you, you work with women, like, you know, coaching, mentoring, you have like your continuity group, like your membership groups, like all these different ways that you interact, Facebook, social media, all day long you interact with women, but you were interact with entrepreneurs too. Is there something here like you're observing though with that quote? Like, I mean, do you observe that often that people say they want something different, but they don't do anything different? All the time. All the time. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I think I, it's funny. I just had a Facebook live about this today is like, there's a lot of talk going on and very little action. 
because it sounds good, right? And people, it's almost like you have the presence of social media and podcasting, all this great stuff where you can say these grandiose, grandiose things and probably even mean them. Like you really have the intention to do it, but there's no system in place. There's no tools. There's no understanding of why people want these things. Like, so let's just give an example. Let's say for, you know, let's say we have two boys, right? Let's say if one of our boys was like running across the street about to get hit by a car. Okay. We would know what we need to do in an instant. I need to sprint and go grab my boy. Why do I want to do that? Because, because I'm their mom and I'm his mom and I want my son to live, right? Like the why would be deep enough. I wouldn't go, mm, I don't know. I'm going to like, maybe I should stretch. I want to pull a hammy. Like I would just go, right? Like there would be no hesitation as to my commitment to that result, which is save my child's life. But the problem is, is when it comes to, and it doesn't have to be to that same extreme, but when it comes to other things that people want in life, they've not, number one, taken the time to really figure out what is that thing that I truly want, like measurable, realistic with a timeline. And it's something that, that um, uh, yes, yeah, measurable is the biggest thing. They don't know the deep why, like why they want to do it, even when they don't feel like doing it. And they haven't simply made the commitment. So they've just talked about it. But, oh yeah, there's bullshit that's talked about all the time, all the time. Lots of talking, very little doing. Lots of, lots of things that get in people's way, and the biggest one is themselves. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's just simply they don't have the accountability? Or, I mean, some people have accountability, and they just don't, they still don't execute. Mm -hmm. what, what, is, what is the, I mean, you've worked with, you've talked to probably over a thousand women now. And I know you, you know, on your podcast, you get thousands of downloads every day. You get interactions with women all the time, but you know, just people in general, why Karen, why are they not executing? Well, I, I think it's those three things I just mentioned. You know, they don't know what it is that they want. Like they don't know. So we're like, you know, when we were in practice and chiropractic, this chiropractic, this would be relevant to, I remember sitting up with new patients and saying like, what, why are you here? What is the goal? And I go, I want to get healthy. I'd go, that's awesome. What does that mean? They'd go, you know, healthy. I go, totally. It means different things to different people. So what does it mean to you? And they could not define that. Mm -hmm. So people yeah. spend a lot of time going, this is, I don't want that husband or that spouse. I don't want this new patient. I don't want this lack of dollars in my account. I don't want my kids to, you know, talk back at me. They'll give you a laundry list of what they don't want, but very little clarity and time spent into what do I truly want? Like what really lights me up, right? I think that's number one. Number two is they, they don't know why. And so coming back to that, that example of patients saying, I want to be healthy. If you go, why? They'll go, you know, because uh, I just want to feel good. Well, that's not going to get their ass up out of bed early in the morning to hit the gym, right? Or have them making a better decision when it comes to food. Like just they're not going to go there if they don't know deeply what that why is. And that often, and that takes work, right? That takes like, writing stuff down in a journal and going, why does this matter? Why is this an absolute must for me to get these things? But that can take some time to figure that out. So I think either another piece of that too is patience and figuring stuff out. And then the third part is like, they just, they haven't committed. Mm, they haven't committed. Yeah. And committed means like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get this thing that I want based on why I want. I know my deep why, regardless of how I feel or, or like, like if the, uh, I had someone sign up post today, like, is it a full moon today? Tell me it's a full moon. Meaning like somehow that's going to be an excuse for not getting shit done because the moon's out or Mercury's in retrograde. Like just, they're not willing to put up with excuses and lies. And most importantly, they just start to tell the truth. They're honest and like about who they are and what they want. So I think it's, I think it's all those things. People can go, oh, well, they don't have the time. They don't have the money. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. No, 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 that's not it. They don't have the accountability. Like you said, people can have accountability and they still don't do something. Yeah, I agree. Accountability is like great. We're like, power, you run groups, I run groups. It's power being in groups. But if you don't have that within you to have the clarity on what you want and why it matters and commit, even someone could be in your face yelling you to do something and you won't do it. Maybe when they were there, but what happens when they're not? What happens when you're not part of that accountability, part of that group? You got to be able to run that stuff on your own. I, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, saw, I was really like, it was funny because I was inspired by this quote the other day and I've seen this quote before. It's almost such a, like one of those quotes, it's almost like a cliche, but it's still, it was like, it hit me and I'm like, I, I watched it and then I read, like it was a little video with it and then I watched it and I read it again and I'm like, you know, it's so true though. And I'm going to mess this quote up or butcher it, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it, Give, them a, give it a shot here. It's, it's basically like you have to be willing to do 
um, like what others will not do for That's a year, 12, 12, 24 months, 12 years, you know, two years to have a life that others will never have. In fact, I've done a podcast on that. <laughs> <laughs> of course you have. How many podcasts have you done, Karen? 286 yeah, shit, shit. as of recording this, yeah. Of that one and about 100, I told you the other day, about 117 of my first one, so over 400 podcast episodes, yeah. But that's a perfect example, Karen, of yes. that's a perfect example of doing what others are not willing to do to have a life of what others will never have, experience. Yeah. yeah, the way I've often said to people is that like, if you want what most people don't have, you must be willing to do what most people are unwilling to do. There you go. Okay. Like that's, that's at least, that's kind of my spin on it. If you want what most people don't have, then you must be willing to do what most people won't do. And it's like, maybe this is going to sound kind of cynical, but this is just the truth. It's like, honestly, some people just, they're not committed. They'll say they are, and they, they can start. Great starters, but they can't continue because they haven't done that initial groundwork. Mm. Like they haven't laid that foundation. So the first time that the resistance comes up or a kid is sick or like some other, you know, shitstorm of life happens, which it happens to all of us, it completely, it completely knocks them off their game and they let everything fall to the ground. And it's not to say that life circumstances don't come up, which make things very tricky and difficult, or maybe you got to shelf that thing you want for a period of time. But it's, I think, you know, the other piece of it too, it is like people don't understand that the little things are big things. They're yeah. huge. Like, look, when people take a look at our marriage, right? Our marriage, which we both talk about, is not perfect. We still fight. We still have things that come up. But it's like, when we look back and we've been consistent, like weekly date nights for over two years, that's over 100 date nights. That's a lot of time investing in each other in our marriage, right, to connect. I mean, the little things add up over time. And people are looking for the big, the big thing, the home run, when they understand, like in the words of Gary J. White, it's the swinging singles every single day. It's the, what I call, it's the unsexy stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's the time that you put in on all these different parts of your life to get the things you want that takes time. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I mean, I love, like, I, I mean, we, we, that was something that we implemented that we'd never done before. And I look forward to those, those every week. I mean, it's, I miss them if we don't, if, like on the odd, very, you know, rare occasion we don't get them. Now I want to, I want to go to struggle. Like we, you know what, you're like, man, are you really going to put me through the interview flow here at, at TCC? <laughs> I'm like, yes, because there's comfort in that for the listeners. I mean, they all know what's coming. So here's the deal. Struggle. I want to be the first guest that's going to throw a curveball. <laughs> no, you won't. They won't so, know what's coming. <laughs> not on my show. Um, oh my God. <laughs> here's, here, here's what I want. I want to, I want to know a time that you struggle, like I intimately know you, right? But not all the listeners know you. So I want them to kind of see a side of you that they don't know. But I also want them to connect with you as a chiropractor mm -hmm. or, you know, if you consider yourself really still a doc. But, but here's what I want. I want to take you back to like, like five years ago, four years ago, one of those times like when you were still in practice and the struggle that you were going through. And I know we kind of talked about what the struggle might be for you or the transition, but what was it? Tell, share with us like what that time was for you, what you experienced, and it's, but most importantly, what you learned from that and how you apply that lesson to your life today. Hmm. I would say it was about five years ago that I started to feel like there was this message inside of me and I didn't know what it was. It was just this like feeling, right? So it started then about five years ago that I, uh, I had this feeling inside of me. I felt like I had this message that I needed to share and I had no idea what it was. I, I could describe it. I, it was just simply this feeling. And it was a feeling that I actually probably had for many years prior to that, but I numbed it. But I finally started to just go like, let me just explore this. So the first thing I thought was, I think I'm supposed to write. So I started up a blog, it's terrible. It then became a blog on a chiropractic office website. And I just started to take action on it. You know, I started, to, I started, I wrote about chiropractic, of course, nutrition and movement and parenting and, and, you know, marriage. And it was the ones on parenting that really hit. And that's where I went off in a direction of, let me talk about motherhood. And I was also at a point in my life where I just didn't understand that women didn't talk about how hard it was to be a mom. And I felt like I was the only one. And so I just really felt it was important to bring that message to the forefront but, you know, it was around that time as well, too, that I was like, geez, I don't know if, um, if, 
if practice is still for me, because at the time you were five years ago, five years ago, you had had emergency surgery. I think by that point with stuff with Crohn's and, um, I think you were probably out of the practice at some point and it was difficult. It was difficult for you to be out of the practice and for me to be kind of like doing things in the practice solo. I never thought it would be a forever that you were out of practice and ultimately that's what ended up happening. But when I started with then my first podcast moment 41, so about a year and a half or two years after that, and I just like, I loved it. Yeah. It was like this whole new world and ability for me to be able to connect with other people, specifically with other women with this podcast. And, uh, I think I started to realize around that time, I'm like, I, I think practice is no longer for me. Like it needs to look different or, and like, that was really, really fucking hard. It was really hard because there was no way in my mind that I ever had any intention. I, you, you and I too, but we would make fun of people like, Oh my God, look at that guy's doing real estate now. Like what an idiot. Why doesn't he, this isn't like a, let me try it out and put my toe in the water and check out the temperature of this chiropractic thing. Like for me, it was like a forever. And so I think for, you know, I denied for a while of like, well, maybe I'll end up just stepping away from practice. I didn't know how that could look or how that would, you know, how could I make it happen? And so I just continued to take action, you know, um, moment 41, the message kind of just seemed like it was done after a little bit over a year. And that's was around the time that you went to warrior with Garrett J white. You had on the podcast ever since you had him on the podcast, our life has completely transformed. When you came back from Warrior and we had been living this way, and I was like, I think there's a different spin for me to teach this to women. Like, I clearly connected with Garrett's yeah. message so well, just having it all with your marriage and your business and with your body and with your spirit, like all these things. But I just knew that there was something different that I had to offer this message. And that's how on that date night, if you go on, hey, have you thought about doing a podcast? I'm like, well, how am I going to work with, I can't do two. And I, I essentially stopped that podcast and two weeks later, I made the commitment, I'm going to do this new podcast, Launch Moment 41, launch the podcast. Uh, four months later, women are like, do you coach? And I'm like, yes, I do. And I had my first webinar and I had 22 women apply and I accepted six. And, you know, I was kind of off to the races at the point of coaching and like, like I loved it. And I think, I think the thing that, and, and I started to kind of be okay with the leave in the practice and we had started to put plans in place and we started to have discussions right of like well maybe we can make this work like maybe we can do this what we're doing and you already started up tcp and you're already coaching and creating products and so i just simply started to see that the biggest thing for me as a chiropractor the most important piece although the laying of hands was the important part and these you know these families and people having amazing transformations with their health i knew for me it was a way for me to connect simply that chiropractic was the conduit to do that. And so I started to just open up to a new possibility of like, well, maybe I can connect in a different way now. And isn't it kind of cool that I can connect with people outside of just the four walls of our brick and mortar office. And holy shit, I'm getting like messages from women like in Italy. Hey, I found your podcast. I really love it. And I was like, what? Like it's just the, 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 the whole concept of something different, a different message started to really open up. And so here we are now five laters, you know, from that message and, you know, I feel very, very strong with my message of women wanting more, which was just like the motherhood thing was done. I really wanted to open this up to more women than those that are just mothers, although I speak mostly still to moms, married moms, is that we have the ability to create whatever we want within our life. And that having a life of more that I talk about in the podcast, women wanting more is possible. And I figured out how to do it. And I simply... But, you know, also very well explain on how to do that. And, and not just like the, oh, you can have it all, rah, rah, yay, sisterhood, like, like tactical stuff, right? Like really teach them the tools and how to do this and how to put it into place. And, um, and I love it because, you know, the biggest, my, so I'm talking about why, right? My biggest why, and I tell this to the women that I coach, it's not for them. It's for their kids. It's for their children. Because I know if these women start to really understand how to live this, their life this way, they start to have this new way of being, they start to really, you know, they realize their worth, they start to have changes in their marriage. I know it's going to affect their children. It's going to affect their business stuff will affect their children. And they start to like raise our, as we're raising our kids, right, is to really like, is to start to raise their kids like 
this way of living life and that we don't have to grow up with all this stuff and then unlearn it later. So to me, I'm just seeing so many women that are not living their life the way they want to end that I feel so compelled to be able to reach them and to teach them how to do just that. And I got to acknowledge you. I mean, like you're coming up on a million downloads. That's incredible. Like that's a lot of people that you've impacted and now you've, you've taken it to the next level. And I, ta I talk about this all the time when I teach, you know, people in my programs, but, you know, TCB, we're not about that. Listen, like, it's like you have these different levels to, to helping women, right? But one of those now is actually live events. So, I, I mean, we always talk about something that's, you know, we talk about the struggle and then we transition into what's amazing and what's cool going on right now. So tell us about the listener, about like what's going on with the live event and then also, most importantly, is like, how can, how can they actually find out more information and get, uh, get on board, get registered? Yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, so this is my event that's coming up on Saturday, June the 10th, where we live here in beautiful Victoria, BC, Canada. Um, was really birthed out of my first two live events. I had two, two and a half day events that were very intense with the purpose of women clearly coming out of that, knowing what they want, knowing why it matters and leaving with the plan to actually put that into place. And I knew the impact of what it's like to be in groups because I was part of a very powerful uh, group being coached by still my coach, Satema, Satema Gali, um, at a, a program called Shield Maiden. And so I knew the transformations that happened at a live event, right? Most, most of the podcasts have been to seminars. It's like there's something very different when you connect with people eyeball to eyeball in that space, away from family, away from kids, away from the practice, and really immerse yourself in that. And so for the me, being able to connect with women, all of the podcasts, yeah, it's super cool, Facebook's great, all these other ways to be able to do that, the live event, like the purpose, and I had the two and a half days, right, which I started to really find too good, like for a lot of women, that's difficult to take that much time away, so it's a one-day event, one day, we're fast tracking all of this. I initially had, I'm gonna have 150 women. Now I'm like, nope, it's gonna be 50. I want it to be really intimate and small. So about half the tickets are already sold right now. We're a little bit less than like four weeks away. Um, that they are in that association of other women that are like them. Because a lot of them feel like they're, the, they're all alone feeling the way they feel or the way that they think. They, so they have this association. They have the access to me as a powerful coach because my two and a half day events were several thousand dollars. For this live event, is 97 for a ticket. So it was a way for me to really open this up to more women to be able to teach them this. And so to be able to leave with, with leave women with rah-rah, but, but impact results so they can bring this back home to their family and really help to create the life that, that they truly want. So we're going to put the link in the show notes. Cool. Um, so everyone who's listening, you can actually head over to TCP. So the, the chiropractic philanthropist.com. We're going to have actually a links to all the resources that Karen's providing plus to her live events. You can actually go there, register, check out more information about it in details. If you need to, you can actually even private message or message me from there and I can connect you with Karen for more details or uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll provide some, some more contact information for her. So show notes, we're going to have a web page also dedicated on TCP, uh, so the chiropracticphilanthropist.com. And uh, if you are listening on your mobile, go ahead and expand, open your show notes right now, and you can click through and actually register this very minute. So don't wait. Karen, you ready? We're going to put you in the TCP time machine. You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, the, the cheesy time machine. Here we go. All right, we're going to send you back to a younger version of yourself. This is right after you came out of chiropractic college. You have the same knowledge, life experience you have today. You meet that younger self. What do you say to them? Trust the voice. Trust the voice and listen to the voice and follow the voice. Okay. Most people don't, don't do that, do they? Hell no. No. <laughs> confused I don't know this is I'm supposed to show up this way I have to have this type of practice yeah that is the biggest thing that's been transformative for me when I teach my clients as we add is just yeah listen to the voice that inner knowing that you we know we know we know all the answers inside it's just we get in the way of it and we overthink things and every single time that I've listened and followed and just done there's been the most amazing stuff that's 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 been created from that Awesome. That, thank you for that. And um, just so everyone knows, that's not me that's farting. That is my dog. <laughs> Freaking dog, yeah. man. 
Karma. Karma. Yes, of course. Crazy. It's there not she is, me. Right on cue. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> let's wrap this up before it gets to, it turns into a gong show. Okay. So um, what we love to do is is end this with something uh, that we a resource, something you're listening to, reading, um, something you're watching. Anywhere you can send docs that they can go and actually start download, downloading, uploading uh, content and starting to get value right away. So something that you would like to drop as a resource, please. Hmm. That I'm listening that's impactful for me or I think will be impactful for your listeners? No, I want to know what, what, like, what's on your bedside table. What are you reading? What, what are you watching and listening to? Uh, I would say what I'm listening to podcast-wise um, is any, actually I consume anything that Gary Vaynerchuk puts out to me, that's mindset. That's self-awareness. He talks about it's of course, business, it's social media, it's branding, it's knowing who you are. Yeah. Gary V. If I have to worship a church of <laughs> someone I follow, he's one of the two and Gary Vaynerchuk is one. So his podcast is called the Gary V audio experience. Or you can just go and Google very Gary V, V E or Gary Vaynerchuk and just watch all of his shit. He is he is the man. Awesome. Okay, so listeners, you can head over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com. Again, we'll have a web page dedicated to our awesome discussion with Dr. Karen Osborne today. And um, anyone who again is watching or listening, excuse me, on their uh, mobile, go ahead and open up their show notes. Karen, you brought it as you always do. And yeah, you, you rocked it. So (laughs) thank you. So no, seriously though, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, it's, I I really appreciate you, you really, truly giving back. I mean, and and you've done this on a consistent basis, you know, with your, you know, with mom at 41 first, and then now with women wanting more, I mean, you have, you're making an incredible impact globally, not just in your community and uh, helping a lot of people and serving a lot of people. So I want to thank you for that and acknowledge you. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate being on the show. Thanks so much. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to the chiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on the Chiropractic Philanthropist.